Greetings, everybody. This is Chris Hislop from the Montana World Affairs Council, and welcome to another episode of Connect Montana. In partnership with the Marine and Mike Mansfield Center at the University of Montana, and with the help of a government official from New Zealand and the Council's General from Korea and Japan, this week we're examining the COVID-19 responses in the Asian region, in their respective countries, and discussing lessons learned. I'm very pleased today to have Mr. Hyung Jung Lee. He's the Council General of the Korean Consulate General based in Seattle. He graduated from Seoul National University with a BA in political science and earned his master's in economic science from the European Institute at University College Dublin in Ireland. Mr. Lee has been in the South Korean Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade since 1990. He has held posts within the ministry as well as serving in the OECD, Libya, Cambodia, and now the United States. Mr. Lee, you are very welcome. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hislop. Um, I'm very glad that uh, I could uh, attend this gathering. Then, um, actually, as you mentioned, my office is located in Seattle. Then uh, I arrived in Seattle uh, two years ago. Then uh, at the early stage, I visited Montana to attend the um, Montana Energy Conference. Then uh, at the time I visited uh, Glacier National Park, then uh, the park struck me. <laughs> so I have a very uh, vivid memory of uh, Montana. Well, well, nowadays uh, we are living in, in a world frequently haunted by um, epidemics. So since the beginning of this century, we, we uh, experienced the SARS, MERS, swine flu and Zika viruses. So in my view, the contemporary world is uh, uh, extremely vulnerable to epidemics, particularly in two reasons. First, um, human mobility has increased incredibly uh, since the beginning of the, uh, this century uh, due to the globalization. And secondly, um, a large number of people are living in uh, urban areas, uh, actually, in, in US alone, um, US had uh, um, about 80 million uh, foreign visitors in 2018. And uh, nowadays, uh, 4.1 billion people, which is about 55% uh, of total global population are li living in uh, rural areas. So uh, this is the reason that uh, uh, it is uh, like a human fate to live together with the pandemics. Uh, in the future. So actually over the last couple of months, uh, now we have been suffering from um, the outbreak of COVID-19. Then uh, this one is really uh, dangerous because uh, uh, it can be transmitted uh, uh, en masse uh, by a single uh, super spread uh, who is uh, symptomatic. Um, from now on, uh, let me start with my uh, PPT presentation. Um, I want to talk about what happened uh, uh, in Korea for the last three months, then uh, how Korean people responded uh, uh, to this COVID-19. Then uh, actually, we identified the first case uh, in Korea around uh, January uh, 20th. Uh, actually, the first number one case in Korea is not a Korean. Uh, it was the a Chinese lady uh, who arrived in Incheon Airport on January 19th. Then uh, at, at that first one month, uh, we, we were able to contain the virus quite successfully, but the uh, situation abruptly changed because uh, there was an, 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 an some event which was taken by the religious sector. Then on 20, February 22nd, we, we observed the uh, rising number of cases. So our cases peaked on, on 
February, February 29th, uh, reaching 909 cases on that day. And then uh, uh, with arduous and serious efforts made by uh, my government officials, together with the medical staff, uh, we are able to uh, improve the situation uh, at the middle of the March. Then uh, since uh, March 15th, now we have uh, less than uh, 100 cases, new cases reported per day. But actually, this uh, couple of days, we, we have reduced that number uh, almost uh, uh, less than uh, 20s. Uh, we are particular in, in, in the fact that we, we uh, were able to achieve this result without a large scale uh, lockdown. Of course, with, uh, though with a little bit of uh, social distancing. Um, now, let me turn to uh, our response against uh, COVID-19. Then, uh, as a caveat, I want to tell you that uh, Korean policies, Korean measures uh, could not be uh, followed by all. Uh, I admit that uh, one side doesn't fit all. But uh, our experience and our strategy may be uh, helpful uh, to our people who, who want to uh, get some or seek some uh, references or, or uh, ideas uh, to fight the pandemic. So uh, Korea is a very vibrant uh, democratic society, which is opened internally and ex externally. So, uh, and uh, we have very advanced the uh, ICT technologies and uh, ICT infrastructures. So with this access, uh, we are able to uh, uh, successfully uh, counter the, the pandemics. So uh, particularly, we, we had a pandemic in 2015, which is called the MERS. So it was really deadly. So uh, by uh, experiencing 2015 uh, MERS, we were able to uh, reform our uh, health policies, granting more power to government to control and uh, uh, to, to uh, collect and disseminate information more transparently and more widely. So with this access, we were able to uh, adopt uh, three key uh, approaches, namely testing, tracking, and treatment. So let me, let me further detail on these three, three uh, strategies. Testing. Uh, testing is very a uh, key challenge in, in handling COVID-19 uh, because uh, it's highly contagious. Uh, so uh, we opened um, uh, makeshift uh, testing site. So, uh, and uh, we, we come to an idea that uh, we could use drive-through uh, testing facilities. So we opened uh, 79 driving-through testing stations. So with this, uh, so far, we, are, we have completed uh, 600,000 tests. So this is the figure, which is quite high, a high rate of uh, uh, testing uh, per capita in the world. Yeah, uh, let me draw your attention to driving, drive through testing stations. Um, I noted uh, in the US, there are many drive-through facilities provided by uh, service companies, but that's not the case in Korea, actually. So uh, uh, only few companies uh, uh, provide uh, uh, drive-through service in Korea, uh, like uh, US-born companies, uh, McDonald's and KFC. But uh, anyway, drive-through service is not uh, so so popular in Korea. But although maybe Korean creativity brought up this idea to to uh, establish a testing site. Uh, so at first, when, when we opened the uh, driving drive-through testing sites, uh, some sort is, is a little bit ridiculous, but uh, uh, now it is accepted as a quite useful uh, instrument to, to uh, extend the testing sites. So in fact, the state, the University of Washington um, opened the drive-through uh, testing site in, in its campus. Now tracking. Um, uh, my government uh, vigorously tracked 
uh, uh, whereabout of uh, confirmed cases, as well as uh, those who contact had contacted with uh, confirmed cases. So um, we used our ICT technology uh, to track, uh, trace uh, uh, roots of the confirmed cases. So we used uh, credit card transactions, CCTV footages, as well as uh, um, uh, mobile phone GPS, and uh, which is allowed by our law. Uh, the law we have uh, um, uh, infectious disease and uh, uh, infectious disease control and prevention act. So I, I know a wide range of uh, tracking is controversial issue uh, in terms of uh, uh, privacy protection, but. Uh, uh, that's why it must be conducted under the strict uh, legal background. So I believe that uh, there must be some social uh, consensus on how far we could uh, extend uh, tracking uh, to, to, to combat uh, battle uh, uh, epidemics. So uh, I, 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 I think uh, uh, there must be a certain uh, democratic checking system uh, uh, that that uh, ensures the protecting human rights and not to uh, uh, violate uh, privacy issues. Then let me go to treatment. Yeah, uh, treatment is a very essential factor because uh, particularly uh, we don't have any medicine to cure uh, uh, COVID-19. So treatment is a very important factor. But anyway, uh, my government provided, uh, uh, has provided uh, all patients uh, with treatment uh, free of charge, even including foreigners. Uh, this, is, this was possible because we have a high quality healthcare system uh, together with uh, the public insurance scheme, uh, which uh, leaves no one behind. So with, with this uh, uh, efficient treatment, uh, we have a good uh, outcome. So out of uh, um, 10,752 confirmed cases, then uh, uh, 8,000 8, people have fully recovered with a low, low rate of uh, uh, fatality. So uh, let, me, let me explain some, uh, some success case uh, in, in Korea. So we have an uh, Incheon airport which is a uh, gateway to Korea uh, and Asia, then uh, airport requires a lot of uh, working uh, steps like uh, immigration steps, security steps, uh, aircraft technicians, and uh, duty-free clerks. So, so Incheon Airport uh, uh, hires about 70,000 working steps. Then uh, uh, it, it, it has done, uh, conducted, uh, disinfection, disinfect uh, cleaning every two, two or three times every day. So, so, so far, uh, uh, among the 70,000 staff members, there's no infected cases. So I, I like to uh, uh, share this information with, with you. Well, my consultancy is uh, working closely with the uh, Korean American community uh, as well as uh, local government. So we basically advise uh, the Korean uh, American uh, to abide by uh, instruction uh, given by the local and federal government. Then uh, we encourage them to uh, help themselves because uh, uh, many people uh, uh, are impacted uh, uh, even in, in terms of uh, economic aspect, uh, there are many uh, small business companies today, they, they have much difficulty. Well, currently, it's not that it's not over yet. So uh, we still, uh, we think uh, we still remain vigilant. Then uh, according to our, our report, then, then their COVID case is very uh, susceptible to, to reinfection. So well, I think we have to continue uh, wearing masks and uh, washing hands. And then uh, I think we have to keep on uh, social distancing. So 
in Korea, every school now at, at the, now at, at online. So we expecting uh, uh, school yearly open uh, early May. So uh, I think we still uh, keep uh, some social distancing. Of course, uh, as the uh, situation getting better, we, we could have less stringent uh, uh, social distancing. So on the uh, uh, photo on the right shows uh, our social distancing during the uh, general election uh, that took place on, on April uh, 15th. Then the bigger challenge is uh, ahead. So now uh, uh, economy is devastated. So we, ha we have to revitalize the economy. So uh, we, we have to normalize uh, our uh, uh, daily life and uh, we have to normalize uh, international mobility. We have to normalize uh, uh, international transactions. So as a way forward, uh, my government uh, suggests that uh, uh, we have to increase the trust, but uh, the trust has uh, many meanings in each spelling. So uh, T uh, stands for uh, transparency, R responsibility, and U united action, and S uh, science and speed, and uh, T uh, stand for uh, uh, together in, in solidarity. So I think this is the uh, new new uh, core value. Uh, our our uh, international community should work together to recover from the COVID nineteen and uh, and uh, further in enhance our preparedness for the uh, future uh, pandemics. Yeah, uh, this ends my my initial presentation. So. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee, for that. Uh, a really fascinating look into what's happening in uh, Korea. Could I ask you to um, unshare your, your screen, please? And we'll come back on to video. Uh, in the meantime, I'd like to introduce Dina Mansour. She's the executive director at the Maureen and Mike Mansfield Center at the University of Montana. First question over to you, Dina. Thank you so much, Chris, and Consul General Lee, thank you so much for the honor of addressing Montana audiences, and we look forward to you rescheduling your visit to Montana and hopefully seeing you here very soon. Um, I will say that I also was traveling through Incheon Airport on January 19th. Um, oh, yeah. I'm so glad that you have such a safe and secure operation there. So as you know, the Maureen and Mike Mansfield Center has also very strong connections to Korea. We work very closely with the US government in supporting our national security strategy, which shares with Korea um, the commitment to democratic nations uh, supporting vibrant trade. And as we work with the consulate in Seattle, what are some ways that we in Montana that can, uh, can that we in Montana can be connected with Korea? Are there uh, trade opportunities? Are there exchange opportunities for our students? Are there other ways, like I see on your Facebook page that you're advertising a film festival. Um, how can we be better engaged in Korea? Uh, yes, actually, uh, while um, I'm working in Seattle, my jurisdiction includes uh, five uh, uh, Northwest uh, states, including Montana. Uh, so that's why I have uh, frequent uh, contact with the Korean American community in, in uh, Missoula. Uh, well, um, I know uh, there is a little bit uh, low level of uh, connection between Korea and uh, Montana uh, these days. Uh, however, I, I think there is uh, some potential. So. Uh, uh, we, for my office, we'd like to enhance uh, cooperation between Korea and Montana. Particularly, uh, we would like to take advantage of a Korean American community in Montana. So, so um, there are a couple of uh, uh, fields that we, we could enhance cooperation, like uh, uh, exchange of students and exchange of universities. Uh, then uh, it may help to to uh, uh, more more close connection between Korea and uh, Montana. Uh, particularly, uh, we have a uh, um, uh, couple of thousand Korean Americans living across the Montana. So 
we would like to take advantage of them, then uh, we help them to enhance some uh, cultural activities. Uh, so so uh, that may help to, to further enhance our cooperation. So anyway, uh, let me think further in, during my office uh, to, to step up uh, cooperation. Then uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, I was supposed to visit uh, Montana uh, sometime in April, but uh, uh, because of COVID uh, outbreak, uh, it's canceled. So uh, um, maybe future, if I could be given any further chance, then I would love to uh, visit Montana and have a more uh, close contact with people in Montana. Thank you for that, Mr. Lee. Of course, you're always invited to Montana. Uh, I'd now like to go to Brigitte Miranda Freer, who is the director of the Montana World Trade Center for the next question. Over to you, Brigitte. Hi, Chris. And hi, Council General. Um, just further to Dina's question uh, and to your uh, the discussion of how we can engage, I can tell you that over the last three years, Montana World Trade Center has been very, very pleased and honored to host uh, several Korean students that um, are about to graduate or have just graduated from the university and I think are sponsored by a, a Korean government program to come and learn, improve their language skills, learn more about U.S. business acumen. And we have been tremendous beneficiaries in the state of Montana based on some of the research that those students have been able to pull together. So I thank you. And that's already happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, hopefully we can expand upon that. Um, Consul General at Montana World Trade Center, we really do focus on growing Montana's international trade portfolio. So I, I do have a trade related question. Um, I'm hoping to get your, your comment on. As you know, when the United States pulled out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, a number of countries decided to move on uh, without the US in what's now called the CPTPP. I always have to think about those letters. Um, South Korea is not a signatory to this agreement yet, and I know that it's been a matter of some debate. Um, do you see Korea joining the CPTPP in, in the near term? What can you tell us about that? Uh, well, uh, uh, CPP is uh, one of the free trade agreement. Then uh, actually Korea have a rich network of uh, uh, um, free trade agreement, bilateral or multilateral. Then uh, basically, Korea is based on open economy, so we are very eager to uh, get uh, more and wide contact with other countries. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, depending on the programs, there is a different level of uh, uh, openness. So basically, Korean government is willing to uh, join CPP, but uh, we are still looking at. Uh, now, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, good network of bilateral trade with uh, uh, other countries. We have, we have a good trade, uh, uh, by trade by, bilateral trade networks with the United States. So we have already sick uh, uh, networks. So CPP, we are, we are still looking at uh, what kind of benefit uh, CPP can provide for us. So it may take a time, but anyway, we are looking at it. Thank you, Council General. Here is a question from one of our participants. Could you please comment on the importance of testing versus tracking in South Korea? Singapore has put more emphasis on tracking, which they feel has been critical to their success thus far. Um, I, I, I don't think uh, it's a matter of uh, testing and tracking. I, I think both are important. At first, we have to um, uh, track and uh, we have such um, uh, potential patients. Uh, as you know, uh, particularly COVID-19 uh, is transmissible uh, by your uh, asymptomatic uh, patient. So it's, it's, it's really dangerous. So it's important to, to trace the uh, proper route of the confirmed cases, as well as uh, those who have had in contact with uh, uh, confirmed cases. So uh, uh, um, I don't think it's a matter of uh, choice between the two policies. So, so we have to put on uh, 
testing and uh, uh, food on emphasis uh, testing as well as uh, uh, tracking. And uh, when we have uh, tracking vigorously, then uh, uh, as I mentioned, there is some um, limitation or legal requirement because it may um, uh, breach uh, uh, basic human rights and uh, personal privacy. So uh, at first, it must be based on a uh, legal uh, uh, background uh, as enacted by the National Assembly or Parliament. Then uh, uh, there must be a strong legal uh, backup uh, to use uh, those collected informations only that purpose. So that's the important fact. Uh Thank you very much, uh, General Counsel. Um, uh, we're now coming to an end. Could I give the last word to you, please? Yes, uh, now uh, uh, we, we all human beings are taking really hard time, then uh, I am sure we'll survive uh, this outbreak in a month or two or three, but anyway, we'll survive. But however, uh, I think we have to learn uh, from this event, then uh, we have to enhance our preparedness for the future. So uh, if, you are, if you fail to this, then uh, um, you, you may be at the risk in the future. So uh, I, I think the uh, human cooperation, human solidarity is an important factor that uh, after this event, so we'll enhance our preparedness for, against uh, any future pandemics. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. That's a great way to end it. Of course, um, you know, looking at this as a, as, as a global issue. And thank you for sharing your experience um, from your country. Much appreciated, uh, General Counsel. Thanks again to our friends at the Marine and Mike Mansfield Center. Thank you, Dina, for joining us. Um, and now uh, we have one more show for Asia Week this week, which is Thursday at 12 o'clock Montana time. We'll have the General Counsel of Japan, also based in Seattle, to come and talk a little bit about their experience in dealing with COVID-19. If you missed any previous episodes of Connect Montana, they're available on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook feed. So until we see you all again, we thank you again, General Counsel, and everybody for coming on. Hope to see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you.